Hey guys, Dave Narona and welcome to Sledder Series. We got a jam-packed show for you today because today we're going to talk about sled skiing. Now what we're going to talk about today also pertains if you're a snowboarder or pal surfing, which I do all three of those, but I come from a background of skiing so it's where I spend most of my time and especially if we're talking about touring off the machine, which we're going to get to as well. Now a little bit of background, I've been sledding for a long time, for, so I but I come from the background of skiing. So I've spent over 25 years in the backcountry skiing and didn't buy a snowmobile for skiing. I bought a snowmobile to get into snowmobiling and I often get the question is, why do you still ski? It is true, snowmobiling is amazing. You will get more pow powder in one year than you have in all your years backcountry skiing, um, especially when you spend a ton of time out there. Um, however, I'm very lucky in the sense that it's my job, so I get to be out there five to six days a week, and I wouldn't want to just sled, and I wouldn't want to just ski. So I love doing it all. So on the really deep days, I love snowmobiling because that is where it's at. It's also able to, you're able to stay a little bit safer through avalanche conditions because you have a motor on you and you don't need to seek out steep gravity slopes like you do if you're snowboarding, skiing, or pow surfing. So I tend to stick to the, the sledding area um, more in, on those really deep uh, storm days. And then after a couple of days of sledding, when we've pinned out a lot of it, then uh, we start to sled ski where we're using the snowmobile for access to get laps in where we can get tons of vertical. And, uh, and then if we pinned out all that, I can tour into zones that we may not be able to retrieve a sled or might not be easy access and faster to tour. Um, and uh, I enjoy all of that. So we're going to talk a little bit about it all today and what I use. Um, and uh, this is an amalgamation of sled skiing for over 15 years and ski touring for over 25. Um, a lot of people don't know my background from sledding, but I used to cross country ski race and race all over North America and Europe and uh, also uh, skied across, uh, ski toured across Alaska from Anchorage to Nome and held a course record for a cross country ski event there uh, as well. So lots of background and lots of information, but it really is to bring it to you so that you can uh, uh, spend less time, energy and money and get out there more. That's the whole purpose of this video. So if you like it, hit the subscribe button and make sure you like the, the video. It really helps me produce more content. So the first and foremost thing is, you either bought a snowmobile to go touring or sled skiing uh, to get you up the hill. So the first thing that you're going to need um, after you've purchased a snowmobile, and we've talked about purchasing a used snowmobile, so we'll put the link in, in the description below, is you're going to need racks to carry your skis on your snowmobile. Believe me, I've tried it every different way, bungee cords, this and that. There is a few good uh, racks on the market and the one that I absolutely love the most because it's really easy to use is the all-new and I helped design it is the all-new 2022 Ski-Doo Link Ski Snowboard and Pow Surf Rack. That's right this will fit everything in it. So this actually attaches into the link system on the side of the snowmobile. There's a front and a back. Uh, there's a new position for this, a position zero what we call. There's actually your sled comes with two link um, pre-drilled uh, holes or the new sleds come with the link already attached and this one the front one will go in link zero which is in front of position one and the second one will go into link two it's also really favorable to use this in my opinion with the the uh, skidoo new short tunnel kick up um, toe bumper uh, you don't need to use that for this rack system, but in my opinion, it's better. It stiffens up the back end and it's pre-drilled for the rack, so it makes everything flow together really nicely. Uh, on the rack side, these are super nice. So obviously, a pair of uh, your skis sit on top, a snowboard would slide down the middle here, as well as a pow surf. And these are adjustable, as well as they have a nice ratchet system. So that depending on the depth of your board or pow surf, as well as your skis, it can be brought down to hold a pair of skis and a pair of poles, or one snowboard, one pow surf. And you can put one on each side. All right, so that's a little bit about racks, and of course you can check those out at skidoo.com or of course your local dealer. We'll get those out of the way. The next thing we're going to look at is bags, because you're going to need to carry all your stuff up the mountain. Now, this can be as easy as an old backpack that you use to throw extra gloves and goggles and all the stuff that you're going to use. Throw it, bungee it to the back of your snowmobile, 
right up to um, the professional system of the link system. You're going to most of the time need spare gas, so they make a nice jerry can. And of course, these all have the link system on there, so they just clip right into your snowmobile super quick and easy. And um, I use the Deep Snow Pro Bag. I use this for sledding um, as well as when I go sled skiing. It's 26 liters. It has a shovel on top. Of course, you always want to carry a shovel in your backpack um, and a probe on your person. But uh, the reason why I love this bag is you can have a shovel and I also carry a probe in here because you're going to use this 100% of the time unless you get separated from your machine. It's faster to get your shovel out of here. You don't have to take your Abbey pack off. So whether you're digging your snowmobile out, whether you're using it for an emergency, or whether you're digging a pit or using it for snow services, your shovel's always right there. I'll back that up with your probe. The reason why I carry my probe there is if it's in your backpack, most people don't take it out throughout the day. But your probe isn't just for an emergency use. It's also used effectively to test snow depth. And you can also feel the layers in the snow as you're going. So if you check it out throughout the day, it's a great way to stay on top of the snow conditions, of course, after you check the AVI bulletin and all that stuff that in your pre sort of test before you head out on the mountain. And if it's easy accessible as it is with this Deep Snow Link Pro Bag, then you're going to use it more. And I do it from experience. It's why I love this bag. It's basically changed the industry of having your shovel on your pat on your back. On, on your back bag, you will use it more and you will use it 100% of the time. The only reason to get it out of your pack is if you get separated from your snowmobile. That's why you need to have one on your person at all times, but this is faster to grab anytime, anywhere. So that's why I, I carry it there. Now, the big question we get, I get all the time is, how do you ride in boots? So initially I wrote, wore downhill boots. They slide all over the, the um, uh, aluminum on your sled on the on the rails on the boards and uh, it, it it takes a little bit of time to get used to um, however uh, because I tour and I kind of have one system that does all is uh, these are actually a new boot the Dynafit Hoji um, touring boots which I absolutely love this is a brand new pair that I haven't even broken in yet but they've got uh, what is similar to a Vibram sole. So this is a rubberized sole, so you get grip on the boards, you can walk around. And I will see, say riding in ski boots is nothing like riding in snowmobile boots. It's the complete opposite. You get way less ankle flexation and it's harder to ride with a ski boot on. Snowboarders have an advantage here because basically using almost a similar boot to as a snowmobile boot. But for skiing, what I love about these is number one, the bottom sole, and also that you can put it into uh, walk mode. And this boot actually, once you, when you tighten it up, it's actually stiff like a boot. Once you loosen it, it loosens all the cuff and the power strap, and you have this huge angulation in your ankles. So it actually works really, really well. The reason why I use a touring boat boot is not only do I ski, but I also tour off my snowmobile. So I kind of have one boot that does it all. I can have lots of different systems and lots of pairs of skis. I get to work with some amazing companies. I choose one. It makes it simple. It uh, provides me with the equipment that I need. And you don't need to spend a ton of money to have a great time out there. You need to find what works for you, have one set, and go use it. And that, I'm a big proponent of that. So that's why, what I love about the Touring Boot. Now, if you don't have an option and you don't want to use a Touring Boot because they are a lot more money than a downhill boot, which you may already have, then you can invest in a bag to carry them. Now it's hard to carry ski boots because they are pretty bulky. And they also can get cold when they're sitting in a bag. So a couple of things that you can do is this is the Roll Top um, Link Adventure bag and it's 40 liters. So you can easily carry a pair of boots in the back here um, and take them to your destination, change out your sled boots for ski boots and then sled ski or tour where you want and at the end of the day put them back in the bag. You do need to be mindful that they will be cold out there so it's good to leave them sort of warm in the truck, put them in the bag, put maybe even a down jacket with them that keeps them a little bit more insulated. That's just one of the pros and cons that you're going to have to deal with carrying your boots. I basically decide that I'm going to sled ski for the day so I usually just wear my ski boots right from the truck can ride and I'm not looking for uh, getting wicked sled lines. Usually I have zones that I can get into that may be a little bit tricky but are nowhere near as hard as what we're riding to get into and the focus is on skiing. And I will say also when you put a snowboard or skis or a pal surf 
on your racks, if you start pal carving super hard and you hit something hard, you will bend or break all those pieces of equipment. I've done it. We've all been guilty of it before or bending them. They are not designed to withstand the 500 pounds of a machine going through powder, maybe hitting a hard thing and pulling the tip out. So really important when you're going sled skiing or snowboarding or pal surfing, when you have that equipment on your sled, I kind of keep it to a low, nice turn counter steer without doing a huge hook turn and that those pieces of equipment grabbing the snow. So huge tip there so that you don't wreck things. I'm going to move this bag out of the way because we've talked a little bit about that and that's how we can get um, up to the hill. Now I will mention with backpacks too, I'll come over here, I'll grab one of my um, packs that I use. So I use Abbey packs and I work with Climb. So this is their 16 liter um, aspect and I use that for sledding. I love it because it's super small and I'll use it also for sled skiing. But when I tour off the machine and why I have both, is the exact reason is this their 26 liter so same avi safety system in the alp ride capacitor system that's super light you can set it off multiple times after charge you can charge it in the backcountry off two AA batteries in 25 minutes i love this pack and that's why when i tour you need something bigger because when you're walking up you're taking your jacket off you're carrying more gear um, through that day. I don't need to carry as much as if I was just touring out of the car and I need to carry everything in my backpack for the day. I can leave some stuff at my sled. I can leave my lunch there and come back to my sled for lunch. 26 liters does it for me. So on that note, if you're looking and you're going to sled, sled and sled ski and maybe tour, get the bigger pack. You will thank me for it. Then you only need to purchase one pack and it will be perfect for all those applications. I'm lucky again that I have a couple of packs because I do it lots and I work with these companies and so um, that's why I have both and choose both. So it gives you a little bit of information there to make your, uh, your, best, um, your best choices uh, for price and energy output spent. So we'll talk a little bit about that. We're going to get into skis now and I've been working with G3 for over 12 years. G3 is a North Vancouver based company. They've actually recently moved. but uh, started in the basement of Oliver Stephens, uh, uh, in his basement making probes, and now they make everything for the backcountry. And I'm very honored to work with that company. They are well represented throughout the world from ACMG guides um, with all their gear. And my favorite ski is this one right here, the Slayer. Now, again, I talk about having lots of pairs of skis, and I do have other pairs of skis because I also ski on Whistler Blackcomb. Um, but for the backcountry, if I go heli skiing, cat skiing, sled skiing, or touring, this is the one set of skis that I feel that I need and that I just want. I don't want a ton of pair of skis. I just want to grab them and go. Uh, easier to take care of them, and they work in all conditions. I found this ski to be super durable because sled skiing can be really hard on skis, throwing them into racks, rallying around, throwing them in and out of the truck. Um, this ski is actually has a year and a bit on it. So as you can see, it still looks brand new. Um, what I love about the Slayer is that it's everything that G3 has done on skis over the last 10 years into this ski. It's light, it's playful, and it's fat. And you know, you can get fatter skis and I've had fatter skis. I prefer sort of, I guess now this would be called a mid fat ski at 114 underfoot. I also want to be in the powder. Let's face it, you get 130 underfoot and you're just gliding on top of the powder. Great if you're skiing 3,000 vertical, super steep slopes in Alaska. But for where I ski on the coast and I'm not chasing the dream of, of being a professional skier, I'm going for fun lines. The 114 is the perfect balance between floating on top of powder but getting in it so that you get it in your face. So that's what I love about this uh, Slayer ski. And I also pair it with the Z9 binding. So this is a tech binding. It allows the rear to be twisted so that you can walk up hills. So it attaches in the front pin and you will need to have a boot like this one that uh, does have tech pins on it to allow you to do that. But it's super light, super burly. I'm not a big guy, but people over 200 pounds that easily get away with these bindings. Um, and so they do, again, everything for me. When I want to tour, I got a great light system. Um, I've gone heli skiing where guys think I can't keep up because I got tech pins and I won't be able to get them faster. I'm usually the first one in my bindings. Once you get used to them, they're just as fast as getting in and out of a regular uh, binding. So you can practice that, um, but that's uh, the ski that I use. Now, when we talk about touring off your machine, 
you will need to have skins. So I pair that with the Alpinist skin, again, because it's the sort of the balance between lightweight and works really well. And this, this is their original skin, so it's come through a lot of generations now using sort of a fish scale in the front here to keep it a little bit lighter, less um, better glide on the tip here. Because really, just like cross-country skiing, your, your grip is around the middle of the ski. A lot of the stuff up here would be just wasted and drag when you're walking up. And, uh, but you do need a good base in the middle and also balance when, when you're touring. Now, when we talk about skins, because if you're getting into, going to have them for touring, it's really important to talk about how to look after them. So when you're, when, when skins are, when you store them, you always want to store them in a cool, dry place. Never put them in a super warm area. The glue that holds them onto the skis will melt and stick to your bases and then you have to redo them, all sorts of things. This is what I do and my skins last all day, never have a problem with them, is um, I fold them in, in three and they go into either my jacket, if it's a quick skin up to keep them a little bit warm, and or my pack. What you really don't want is you don't want a lot of uh, snow and ice build up on your skins. So keeping them dry when you take them off and shaking them out if there is a little bit of snow on them, as well as getting them in an area where they're, uh, it's a little bit warm so that that snow can melt and fall off is going to keep them working really well all day. When I come home at the end of the day, I unfold them and I hang them in a storage area that's uh, dry and cool, but it also is a little bit warm that it's going to dry them and they're ready for the next day. You'll see this at cabins if you go back and you're skiing and people hang their skis. The worst thing you can do is really heat them up or let them freeze overnight then they're not going to adhere to the bases and they're just going to get worse over those successive days you go or through the day that you're out. So looking after your skins, I can go through many years with skins and not have to do anything to them just from looking after them. And again, you spend money on this equipment, so look after it. It'll last a long time and really work easily and well for you in the backcountry. As we all know from sledding or backcountry skiing, everything is about um, managing the elements. So from your gloves to your skins, keeping snow, don't touch things as much. We'll keep those gloves dry, we'll keep your skins dry, they'll work better throughout the day and you'll stay warm throughout the day. So uh, another little important uh, tip there. So when we talk about backcountry safety, we're also going to talk about um, some of the emergency gear that uh, we have here. The G3 has been started by making probes. And again, I talked about the importance of carrying a probe in my deep snow uh, probe bag so that I can take it out, uh, assemble it really quickly, and then I can check snow depth. And one of the great things that G3 has done is every half centimeter it's marked so you know your snow depth. You can also feel those ridges of the new layers versus old layers. Again, the temperature variation in old and new layers are where you're looking for uh, avalanche conditions, all right? So you can feel that with a probe and it's a quick, easy way of checking. And that's really what you want is just a, more of a snapshot throughout the day when you're traveling, whether you're on a snowmobile or when you're, whether you're backcountry skiing, and a probe can allow you to do that. Again, always important to carry on your person in your backpack. But like I said, I carry one on my, on my bag as well because I take it out and use it more. The G3 probes are super strong and easy to take care of. Again, just look after them and they're going to suit you. This is a carbon one and they also make a 7000 series aluminum, which is a little more durable. And overall, this is probably what's going in my pack because it's a little less money and uh, more durable, going to last longer. So you can make the choice between there. Probes range from anywhere from 240 centimeters up to 320. Now really any probe, depending on your snow conditions, your snow depth will work for you. Lots of people like to say this probe, you need this size. Really the longer probes definitely help more professional guides who are doing maybe more searches um, through the winter or for things. But for, um, for an enthusiast like myself and everybody out there, 240 to 280 is more than enough. 280 being starting to be a little more favorable and more so just because you don't have to bend down as far. You can still hold a higher position while checking further down and that's important. Again, with all this information, it is important to take and the only way you should be in the backcountry is having taken at least a level one avalanche safety course, which you can do through 
motorized snowmobile or backcountry skiing, snowboarding, or pow surfing. Next, we're going to talk about the Avi Tech shovel. This is the shovel that I use. It's a super burly shovel used by guides worldwide. Um, it's a 6000 series aluminum, super strong shovel head here. Uh, very sharp so that you can, if you're digging pits or you're digging ice and snow out of the way, uh, this is going to get the job done. It also has slots to make this into a sleigh to pull someone out if, in the backcountry if you need to do that. And it also has a telescopic handle right here and super easy and, and, uh, and strong to use. Again, I carry one in my pack and also one on my tunnel bag. You can choose between a uh, D-handle with the new grip on here that is a real uh, great um, addition to the line because it actually keeps your gloved hand a little bit warmer on this and gives you more grip. Or the T-handle which is a little bit lighter. Really a personal preference. This is going to be a little bit stronger as far as giving you more strength and robust for shoveling. This is a little bit lighter but works really well especially for pulling pulling out snow as well so lots of different uh, ideas there for you to check out well and lastly we're going to talk a little bit about sled skiing snowboarding and pow surfing because it's the second um, most uh, asked question i get is how do you do it so people wonder why you've got snowmobiles you've got skis all this stuff is that generally the ideal number to do it with is four people. So you all ride up into the backcountry and whether you're at the top and skiing down and then picking up or whether you're riding to the bottom and then, um, and then riding up and then skiing down. Wherever you do it and those vary from whatever terrain that you're using is all four people will go to that one area. You'll drop two sleds and any gear that you're not really using you can leave it there at the bottom as make sure it's out of avalanche uh, uh, harm's way so that it's an island of safety so that if something comes down it's not going to cover all your stuff or at the top same sort of idea choose an area that's kind of out of the elements where you can leave your stuff that you're not really using for that uh, when you're sled skiing or sled boarding or pow surfing. And then what you're going to do is if you're at the bottom, you're going to leave two sleds and you're going to double uh, your skiers or snowboarders or pow surfers to the top and they're going to drop off and then they're going to ski, snowboard or pow surf down for safety. Two people works really well. The other two will take the other route down making a better pa uh, track to the bottom to pick them up. You'll then go back up and you'll switch off if, if all four of you are uh, skiing, snowboarding, and pow surfing. Really, really easy and quick way to get vertical. And uh, I've taken tons of backcountry skiers out that have gone, well, I can't believe how hard it is and how fun it is. Just as much fun going up as it is going down. So the other way is, and what I do a lot now, is just have one other buddy. So again, what we'll do is we'll go up to either the top or the bottom. We'll drop that sled and we'll double up and then we'll ski back down to it or if we're starting from the top we'll both ride down leave a snowmobile and double back up to it ski down as two for safety then we'll double back up and then both get on our snowmobile go down leave another one and double back up so it adds an extra element of riding uh, one more loop to retrieve the the snowmobiles or reset the snowmobiles so that's how we sled ski and we've talked about it all today. Of course, if you have a comment or question, leave it in the comment questions down below. We'll try to get it answered for you. And I hope you have a great season out there. I can't wait. We started to get snow in, in BC here. So it won't be long before we're out sledding, sled skiing, sled boarding, pow surfing, having a great time with our friends in the backcountry. We'll see you out there.